Isn't there something really important I had to do this week? Not that video project again. Yeah, that's it. I thought you said it was about something important. Can Michael overcome the inner critic who's been casting fear and doubt over that thing which he deeply desires? Those who put ideas out in the world are almost always certain to find a critic that will challenge their ideas. The bigger or more innovative the idea, the greater the likelihood that someone or many someones will poke at it to see how well it holds water. I'm going to tell you about a daily habit I put in place that has helped me to thwart my own inner critic's evil plans. Of all the critics in my life, my inner critic is the most negative, probing, debilitating, wet blanket of them all. In fact, his presence is so problematic that I had to give him a name. Christopher Critic. At your service. How can I hinder you? Good one. Hello, Christopher. Hey, Michael. What are you up to? Oh, just creating a video to help people deal with, well, you. Oh, that sounds like a bust. A lot of work on your part with little reward. Well, I have run into a few hurdles so far. That's usually an indicator that what you're doing is a huge waste of time. Let's be real here. It's not like anybody's going to watch it anyway. Maybe you're right. I just thought this was a topic that could really help content creators, you know? Oh, them again. What have content creators ever done for you? My advice? Get out of dreamland, whip up some chips and queso, and browse YouTube for new dog fail videos. If I didn't know what you were up to, I might have actually fallen for that. All right, maybe a couple videos. Mission accomplished. <laughs> When I'm contemplating my next big project or embarking on a new journey, it's normal for my inner critic to show up anytime I reach a roadblock or difficulty. He loves to tell me how I'm not qualified, not good enough, or how I'm going to fall flat on my face from 10 stories high and probably end up getting eaten alive in some dark alleyway by flesh-eating rats. Well, I'm sure you know how crippling and imaginative this self-talk can get, but there's a habit I'd like to share that has helped me to get beyond my own inner critic. First, let me tell you about the peculiar ways of this ancient Roman senator named Cato the Younger. In ancient times, Cato was known to wear mismatched clothing in formal gatherings to embarrass himself on purpose. Tim Ferriss, on his podcast, explained Cato's behavior, saying, He did it so he could practice being ashamed only of the things worth being ashamed of. This was a big hit to my very core, where I can be plagued by the thoughts, what if this project or this business fails miserably? What if people could care less about what I have to say? These questions and many others are some of the typical negative self-talk that ultimately become roadblocks on our journey to doing what we're called to do. Worse yet, we're not even able to control how people respond. So is there really a good reason to worry? Cato didn't think so, mm -hmm. and neither should we. So, how can we use this information to deal with Christopher? What if we began to develop a daily habit to do something bizarre every day? This could be something uncomfortable or new, scary, embarrassing, or risky. Every day we intentionally do something that requires us to walk along the edge of failure. For me, today, it was actually writing an animated character into my script. But it doesn't always have to be something bigger. It could be one simple task you've been putting off, like returning an overdue library book, or drinking an extra glass of water instead of reaching for a soda. Do something that is out of character for you. So that's easy enough, right? But wait, if you're anything like me, your fear will place a mental roadblock as soon as you think about doing scary things. What if I fail? Does this sound familiar? Okay, so we're going to deal with this by responding to our fear with this question. What's the worst that could happen? Yes, you might veer off course. You might confuse people. You might fail to reach the people that need your message, product, or service. But will this decision end your life? Will it really be so crippling that you can't bounce back from it? It's not likely. And here's a bonus thought. Say it does fail. Wouldn't you be glad that you learned that painful lesson early in your journey? I know I would. So just for review, we're going to do something bizarre every day. Something out of your normal character. When Chris whispers in our ear, you're gonna screw up. We respond with truth and hope. Yes, Chris, I might stumble, but I'm gonna stumble forward. Psh, whatever. 
Build a habit of doing something bizarre every day. Get started on that thing you're putting off. What's the worst that can happen? Is there something bizarre that you can be doing right now? Let me know in the comments. Just typing it out might even give you a sense of accountability. If you liked this video, it'd be really helpful if you could give me a thumbs up or shared it with someone who needs it. Until next time, daydreamers, toodles.